morning everybody it's the 6th of october and day two of my ownership of the v7 uh, motor gutsy special so today is going to be a full day with lots of things to do um there's going to be a fa fair old list i'll perhaps put up some bullet points here uh, summarize them and um, there's going to be detailing and there's going to be a few maintenance tasks depending on when things arrive um, but first and foremost, I need to try and sort out the gear change lever because at the moment I can't get my foot under it. So I can put it into first, but I can't do anything else with it. Um, well, not without a struggle anyway. So I need to try and just free up enough movement to see if I can get that working. If not, we're looking at uh, maybe lowering foot pegs, which is a bit of a pain, or, or some kind of adjustable um, gear peg itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some still images using my high resolution cameras either on the phone or on my uh, Fuji X-T2 try and get some better knowledge I've already had a quick look on underneath uh, that's also told me that there's uh, a bit more cleaning to be done particularly on the silences and some work I can see would be beneficial in protecting any sort of vulnerable bits of the bike so that's enough for now See you later. I've also made my first purchase today. I'll, uh, you, can, you might be able to see it behind me on the screen there, but I'll just put up a better image this side probably. And uh, yeah, so nice t-shirt, get me started. Uh, uh, as an addendum, I should add that I am not the world's best mechanic, far from it. In fact, I'm closer to the worst mechanic than the best. Uh, I always have been, but I've got some basic skills and I'll try not to let things uh, get on top of me. But I might need to switch to secondary tasks if things are getting a bit tough. Uh, obviously anything to do with safety will be done by a mechanic who knows what they're really doing. Um, I'm also suffering with a medical condition at the moment, which means I have to take these high dose prednisolone steroids and that makes me jumpy and shaky and leads to sometimes to lapses in concentration and memory. So things take longer, despite the fact that I feel speeded up. If any of you watching this have ever taken a good line of Coke or other stimulant, you'll know what I mean. But unfortunately with this medication, you don't get the sense of euphoria that goes with it. I'm afraid you just uh, are jumping, shaking, and don't sleep very well. Um, but it's there for a reason, so I'll go into that in another video. But just pre-warning people, this is not going to be a how-to video, it's going to be a how I did it video and how I tackle and overcome the problems I have in commencing ownership of this magnificent motorcycle to get it to fit me so that I feel confident riding it in almost all situations. Uh, and that increases my level of safety and well-being and I'm really looking forward to get going. So enough talking, let's get on. Okay, so I'm gonna take some high res pictures with the stills camera, which has got a macro lens attached. I've also got my phone, which has also got a good macro lens. Uh, bikes in its shed, it's probably the easiest way to try and get at least this task out the way. Uh, I've got a service light under there to give me a bit of extra light. So let's see what I can do. Okay, so it's about time to get started. Oh, I've got giant trade size GTA to five because it's quite corroded down there or at least pretty mucky. Pair of pliers, some Allen keys and selection of smallish spanners. Let's see if those meet the requirements. They may or may not, but you've got to get started sometime. Um, I might try and put you down near me to see if you can catch some of this but it might not be possible to record or something because it's very tight down there. Okay, let's get started. So I hope you can see what I'm trying to do here. There's the tie bar with the two uh, locking nuts uh, above and below. So the first thing to do is see how much room for movement is here so I want to bring this up as much as I can apologies for that any wandering camera so I'm going to put this down and see if I can actually I'll turn it around the other way okay 
Let's see if we can get any adjustment. So we've loosened both of these off. As I said, I'm not the world's greatest mechanic. So this is not an instructional video as such, it's a it's a can somebody with a, a modicum of mechanical knowledge make a simple adjustment without coming to grief? I think this may only be the first step. So we want the the lever to be a further position so there's more gap between the footrest and the uh, gear changer of course the alternative is lowered footrest which you can buy but they're about 70 quid which seems like a lot of money for what should be a simple adjustment so to bring this one up I think we've got to and to do that all oh, right there's a flat on there so Grab that with another spanner. So I'll turn this off for a moment. Okay, so I've gained enough adjustment to get my uh, boot under the uh, foot peg, under the gear change lever, but only just. I'll see if there's any further to go, but I don't think there's an awful lot. So that job is done, at least for now. I may go back and adjust the splines uh, for more clearance, but I can change gear both down and up now which is a pretty much key point. Uh, so, on to the next thing. Huzzah! Apologies to Captain Rambunctious for using his phrase, I'll pay the royalties. On to item number two on my agenda, which is a pretty major surprise. I never seem to get through as much as I think. I'm gonna try and find a site to mount the quad lock, which is, I consider, an essential thing. Now, I've got my new phone, which I, had since Saturday. I haven't got a case that's uh, suitable but I do have the remains of my old quad lock stick on mount which I'm going to attach to the phone purely for purposes of alignment and then ultimately when I get around to riding I get a new attachment proper case and then we'll be sorted. So the thing is where am I going to put it because we've only got one set of handlebars which need a nice polish to get rid of any of that. Um, and p potentially the quad, the, sorry, the Oxford hot grips or controller goes on the left bar. Of course, if I had one of those where it was built into the grip, that would uh, obviate that problem. So I could put the uh, mount on the left bar, as I always did have, although it may well be like that. Or we could go on the right bar, which would hopefully mean no clutter. And there's certainly plenty of bar to line it up to. Or even in the middle. But the trouble with that is when the phone's in its upright position, it's going to be obscuring the instrument panel. Although fine in the horizontal position. But of course, because this is only a, a single um, Allen key screw, it shouldn't be too difficult to uh, move about if I could to find the right bit. Ultimately, what I hope to do is have a USB um, mount for the quad lock, which you can get off the website, which will trail down to the same connector as the uh, battery tender. So they'll share that SAE connector. So the USB will be for trips out and things where I need to navigate. Battery tender for keeping the battery in tip top condition. Okay, so first things first, phone in its, its you know, semi-soft case. This is not a, a durable case, it just comes with the phone. But I just want to line it up so it's approximately in the middle. Yeah, you can see that? Stick it on, there's still a fair bit of grab here. Try and make it pretty much in the middle. I think that'll hold, at least for today. Yeah, so it's on a quad lock mount course knowing me I always get things off centre but it'll do for today okay so now I'm gonna 
try and think of how it would look. So there would not be too bad. Got to bear in mind there's quite a small gap there. Wouldn't want it to. Okay, so it's a clever mechanism. There's lots of accessories, wireless charging pads, all kind of joints, things. I think it's the best phone mount in the world. And Quadlock, if you're listening to this and feel like um, supporting this channel, yeah, welcome. Right, so, so this is how I have it sort of set up at the moment. Is that going to work? Well, there's only one way to find out. So we take the Allen key out. Now, try and avoid dropping things, which I'm very, very, very good at. Got a little bit of uh, thread lock on there, but uh, we'll see whether that's relevant. So, OK, so that doesn't fit because it's the wrong insert. So I've got, now got to get a different insert. So back in a minute. Okay, so I think I've got this pretty much how I would like it. It's fairly straight. It's at a decent angle. I can adjust that later. But uh, I think I'm going to go with this. It doesn't obscure the instruments. Um, doesn't obscure any of the hand controls, mirrors. So there's room perhaps for a controller for heated grips there. Uh, or even a USB socket, I guess. And of course, I might be adding the uh, quadlock USB. So still very provisional but i think we're getting there slowly so that's two jobs ticked off just need to do a bit of tightening up make sure everything's not gonna walk from its current position as i said i will go back and uh, lock tight all these so uh, yeah very much a first go but I'm reasonably happy with this let's take the phone off because it will not stick very well so it's very easy adjusting quad locks because they're all the same size allen key and there you can see the effect of the uh, anti-vibration mount which should do its business otherwise it just shakes phones to bits basically it did even on my Kawasaki Vulcan and, and that was a much smoother bike than this I'm sure Okay, two jobs done, and it's not one o'clock. Hurrah! You'll notice the um, old cloth put over the tank to prevent any bits being dropped on it and scratching it, so that's really what I don't want. So, lunchtime, methinks. Is that a shower cloud coming over? Hopefully not. Okay, it's after dinner, after lunch, and uh, something very good happened because uh, the parcel I was awaiting from Amazon has arrived, uh, which is the um, battery tender lead. So without further ado, let's get it opened. Let's get this little puppy out. Mr. Amazon delivered, bang on time. So there we go. It's spitting with rain at the moment, so I might have to uh, cover the bike up if we're uh, disturbed. Oh, neat little bag. I can use that for bits and pieces. So there it is. It's basically just a power takeoff to a standard SAE socket. And uh, excuse me, the table's slightly rocky, so there isn't an earthquake happening in uh, Cornwall, at least not today, until Liz Truss and her mates get on with the uh, fracking. Oh, politics. Right, so it's uh, that's your connector at one end. That will take your battery tender cables or other devices. In this case, I'm planning to dual use it so that it will also um, provide power to my quad lock with its USB um, accessory so that I can keep my phone charged if I'm doing long journeys. So it would mean having it in a place where I could swap from one connector to another, which seems pretty straightforward. Uh, and there it is. Terminals one end. Connector the other. So I'm going to go and fit it now. I've looked at a YouTube video by a chap called SP Steve. That's uh, pretty clear and comprehensive. I intend to follow the same procedure. So I'll put a link to his 
in my description, but in the minute it started to rain, so I'm going to go and cover the bike up. Rain break over. Let's get the bike cover off and get this on. What I'm going to need is uh, one 10 mil spanner and one 4 mil Allen key. And that should be it. The main decision will be exactly where I put it once it's installed because of my aforementioned decision to uh, share with the uh, quad lock USB. So it's got to be accessible for both. Uh, and also, at the moment, the battery is on the right side of the bike, which is on the opposite side to the uh, battery that was in the Vulcan. So it's not on the right side for the, where the uh, battery tender itself is mounted. So I'm going to figure out, as you Americans say, where exactly the whole thing is going to fit together. But the basic procedure is pretty straightforward. So here we go, there's the uh, tender lead. Correct procedure apparently is to undo the 4mm Allen key here, which is pretty straightforward as you might expect. I don't know how much thread it's got on it, that feels as though it's quite loose now. And then you push forward something like that. No, well, that just kind of came off, really. Not much pushing forward required uh, at all. So I'm going to put that down safely, out to the way. Right, let's have a little look at the battery. So, pretty much as he described, procedure. There's the rear brake uh, cylinder, so I can check the level on that is good. I'll tell you what, the axis here so much better than uh, on my Vulcan S. You could hardly move with that one, so let's find where I put that spanner. I get on with the very first thing. Disconnect the battery. 10 mil. Oh, yeah. So there we are. Battery disconnected. I'm told that's okay, but this is an AGM battery which is absorbed glass material, absorbed glass mat, I think. So, you connect up the positive first, or rather the negative first, which is where he did it, and then the uh, so, there she is. As I said, it's got plenty of leeway for, of course, these things can be a bit of a nightmare. Now, is it best to go out like that? I don't think there's any reason to. For the positive, accentuate the positive, they say. I can pull that out there, gives me better access to that, which actually could be slipped down there a little bit, just an itsy witsy bit. As you can see, I'm Captain Fumble Fingers. If I was ever a superhero, I'd be Captain Clumsy, I think. I can do this. Anyone can. Here we go. So 
bits like that. We'll go along behind there. Both terminals positive and negative are connected. Now it's a case of where do we hang this out? And I'm going to try and see if it will go through to the other side and there's a suitable location for it. But there may not be. So we might be stuck with this side, in which case I'd have to think about reciting the actual battery tender. It might be a little bit of struggle because uh, there's uh, not too much lead available for where the power supply is, um, is fitted. Next step, let's take the seat off. Might make this a little bit easier. Already done this once yesterday. And uh, it's actually pretty grubby under here. An opportunity to be a bit of a clean. There's not much space under here. That's where the C spanner for the uh, suspension goes. So, and I know there are other connectors under here. As we can see one, but what I want to do is see whether there's any opportunity for this to uh, come off to get that cable through. At the moment I can't see it. Right. 4mm Allen key. I think the procedure will be roughly the same as the other one. So I haven't uh, actually rehearsed it. Oh, don't start raining again. Another intermission. It's like playing bloody cricket. Ah, this one doesn't come off completely, does it? It's uh, more of a lean off job. There we go. That's about as far as you're going to get it because of the shiny lead. But there's still plenty of room actually. Yes, but it looks like we're going to have it. <sighs> okay, we may well have another rain intermission on our hands. People? So where is this? It's going to be quite hard to get it through here, isn't it? It might. Oh. That would come to there, I think. So that'll be fine. Yeah, just get a cable tie. And then we can add the quad lock to the next location. So I don't need to take this off at all, really. Right, so I've reattached that. So we're going to settle for um, the cable being just about there. Which, with the cable tie to hold it on, should be ideal. Connector is around there. I can just tuck it back there when I'm not using it for anything and you wouldn't even notice it's there. If I can actually manage to cut this. Hurrah! Again. Well tucked away around there. No view in there it's there. Excellent! All three jobs done. Ha! Ah, it can be done. Right, what's next? Well, I think a little bit of detail around the uh, under seat area, and I'll show you. So, as you can see, it's plenty dusty under, under there. That's the very shallow tray for whatever tools and bits and pieces you might be able to get in there. Perhaps a pair of your favourite sunglasses. Um, but yeah, can you see these little white spots? These are uh, fly poo, so not very nice when they get rid of them. I notice there's a little bit of slightly uh, dimply chrome around here. I'm not going to do full detail now. I think that's a tomorrow job, in actual fact. Look, the uh, original factory inspection plate. Well, finished for the day. I've achieved all three of my tasks. Uh, that is the um, adjusting the angle of the gear change lever, fitting the battery tender and mounting the quad lock. 
Now all of this is a bit provisional but uh, I feel that we're well on the way and they've even had time for a little bit of detailing on the slightly rusty chrome exhaust and a bit on the rack too so it's a bit of a start. Tomorrow is detailing day though so we're really going to set to town. Um, I may well have to go and get some additional fluids like um, pro prep or some, something similar to help the finish on the sort of matte black parts or the satin black parts as it were. Okay, right, so I'm going to put the bike away now before it rains again. Fantastic!